Oh, oh, like that carry and talk. Please do so, please do so. This wire cannot do not too long. So let's let's try and recap what we learned in uh, chapter five in EMAP. Do you still remember all this stuff? Now what you need to highlight here is uh let's do a bit of recap. Huh? So if it's a this kind of graph, you say that you say that, oh it's a this kind of shape, right? So what what is this kind of graph called? Tell me cubic, right? So cubic, Jashen can start. Uh, so cubic shape graph, then you write down oh it's a, it's this kind of shape. Now now, if it's if it's a square, that means it's a what graph? Quadratic, right? So quadratic, you say that, oh, it's a U or N, huh? so it's no problem. Now, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so why why is there like 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 two different? Uh, because one is uh, so if I use a green pen to write down an example, this will be y equals to two x square. However. The other one, Ming Yuan, will be y equals to negative 2x squared, like that. So, I have u and n. So, similarly, uh, this one can be y equals to 2x uh, cubed, while the other one is negative 2x cubed. And hence, you see that the shape is somewhat reflected. So, so far, okay with the four graph. So, it's a, it's a revision that we are going through. Now, the third set of graph, we are looking at n equals to 1. So, what kind of graph is this? Linear, right? Linear. So you, it's a linear graph, and linear we know uh, uh, it, it's going to be a straight line. So it's either sloping up if A is positive, sloping down if A is negative, right? So if you look at the, the equation, it can be y equals to 2x or y equals to negative 2x, right? So so far, okay, I have the, the, the six different graph here. So can I bring your attention to the next? Half of the page where they introduce this thing called what? This one we call what, what kind of graph is this? The angry graph, right? Wait, how about the one? Oh, still have, huh? Uh, yeah. So, so this is both linear, but what's the difference? Is this one is a constant? Do you see that? So this is like y equals to two. Uh, if you really want to put x, uh, it's actually x power zero. Or, or in short, x power 0 is just 1. So this is y equals to 2. So it's still linear, but it's special because this is horizontal, right? Horizontal. Uh, to put into context, I can also have another type of horizontal uh, line, which is called vertical line, right? Vertical line would be somewhat like, uh, if I were to have an arrow y and x, I have this is 2, then this would be x equals to 2, right? So this one we also learned before. So you see that linear graph, there are like three different subcategories. So this is okay. Okay, we go to the angry graph now. Now angry graph, we say that uh, I have four quadrants like that. And uh, the trick is I have to take four and I, I choose how many? Choose two of them, right? So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. So obviously this one I have chosen one and three. This one I have chosen two and four. This one I have chosen one and two. This one I have chosen three and four. Right? Something like that, right? But how do I know which one to choose? We say that we use value testing. Do you still remember value testing? Value. So let me just do a quick recap. Huh? Value testing means I will use uh, x, one, negative one and one. I want to put y and then I see what is the value of y to decide which quadrant to choose. So for example, if I were to use this example y equals to 2 over x, I put into the value testing. Let's try it. See that I've got greater now? 2 over negative 1. What do you get? Negative 2, right? So can you tell me where, where, where is this coordinate? Quadrant 1. Quadrant 3, right? Do you see that quadrant 3? Right, because negative 1, negative 2, right? Do, do you follow? So if I were to highlight negative 1, negative 2 belongs to this, belongs to here, so it's in this quadrant, somewhat like that. Can we try the other the other value? Let me try and use another color. So if I have 1, I put inside the equation, what is the y value? Oh, so you say it's 2. So you say, oh, this coordinate uh, is 1, 2. 1, 2. So where is 1, 2? 
quadrant one, right? So we know that it is in the first quadrant, and hence I choose one and three for this equation. Similarly, if I repeat four times, I'm able to plot out all the four without remembering which one is which. All I need to remember is I need to remember whenever I have y equals to one over x or y equals to 1 over x squared. This family is called angry graph. Can, 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 can you recognize the pattern? If x cubed is called cubic, but if x power minus 1, x power minus 2, this is called angry graph. Angry graph means 4 quadrant, you choose 2 quadrant. And how to choose? We use value testing. Uh, is it possible to choose 2 and 3? Based on the example here, answer is no. So it's either 1 and 3, 2 and 4, 1 and 2, or 3 and 4. Don't believe me, you use the same value testing method. You go and do 4 times, and then you mark the crosses. Only when you do, then you believe. In the other you don't know what I'm talking about. Is that okay so far? Any questions so far? No. Huh? So all this is EMF. Then what is EMF? So this part here is still considered EMF. Do you remember this graph? This is the aeroplane, right? Aeroplane. So the aeroplane take off like that. Ah, uh, then this is. Then how do I recognize this graph? This is the y equals to a to the power of x. So how do I differentiate this with the rest of the graph? All right. So I can even take a pink highlighter and highlight. This family uh, is different from the rest of the family because this family here, the x is at where? Power. While the rest are uh, all the other graphs, the x is at the base. Okay? So once you follow the story, right, then you realize that all this graph is easy to recognize. How does it come in an exam in the mid-year you experience, right? They give you the actual graph. Then they ask you which one is possible. Then you got to guess. So every guess is one mark. So far, okay? Now, then, let's go on to power graph. So, what Amex is talking here? Can you write down for Amex? For Amex, we have settled y equals to x power 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, comma, minus 1, comma, minus 2. But for a max, uh, today, uh, uh, what, what, what am I writing here? This is a range of <coughs> power. Am I correct? Range of the different number of power. As the number change, uh, you realize that the graph change. Then in a max, why are we still learning this? Because you are going to learn number that is bigger than this. Example, y equals to x power 4. Oh, how do you Or y equals to power half. It's all. Ah, then this is what we're going to do. Is that okay? Okay? Do you accept this, this story? No. So, let's look at uh, the first one. Now, uh, when x is more than 1, uh, what I want you to recognize between the two graphs is this is called an even power. Can you write down? That means I'm telling you, if it's an even power, if it's square, 4, 6, 8, 10, you can expect it to be something like that. Okay? But if it's an odd power, then you can expect something like an uh, S shape. It, it follows somewhat like a... All of you agree that the y equals to x squared looks something like that? Yeah. So if I throw in another one and say, hey, how about y equals to x power 4? Eh? Oh, also like that, huh? Wow. Also a u-shape, right? But a, a, a more weirder u-shape, right? What happens if I x, y equals to x to the power of... Give me a number. 60. Can you see? Yeah. So as the power becomes bigger, the 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 curve actually becomes more rectangularish, right? Rectangular, right? So but but so if it's 
okay, just to entertain you. Uh. So if it's 100, it looks more like a... Uh, yeah, it's like that. Can you go back and play? Like, yeah. Okay. So, so it's a U-shape. So let's go back to the note. So do you agree that for even power, is somewhat like that? Okay. But can I draw for Y? Y? Can I highlight this? And I highlight this, so this is the y equals to x squared, right? Can you now draw y equals to x power 4? Can I use the Desmos to help us? I, I remove the... So do you see that the blue color graph now has... Uh, it's still a U shape, but... But... But it is... It is more rectangular, right? More rectangular. Do you see the special point here? 1, 1 and negative 1, 1, right? So, since this is our node, let's try to be as accurate as possible. I will use a green, uh, red color pad to draw all the other one. Eh? So, it seems like it is more narrow. It seems like it will touch for a longer time. And then it seems like it is more narrow as well. So the magic point is it will still cut 1, 1 and negative 1, 1. So far, okay? So this, this chapter here, nothing much. It's just uh, trying to understand what is going on with different power. Can I introduce you x cubed? Uh, now we know it's uh, the s shape thingy, right? So what happens if this is x5? Do you see the same thing happen? So the base become more rectangular, less U, less round, right? Uh, also, the two special points here is 1, negative 1. 1, 1, and also negative 1, negative 1. Okay? So, go back to the graph. So, maybe I just highlight the Y5, and then I use a red color to draw Y5. I will probably draw this. Eraser. I will probably draw this with a flatter base and cut inside. I think cut inside, right? See the blue color. The blue color cut inside of the red nearer to the axis. The blue color cut inside of the red nearer to the y axis. The blue color. Look at the blue color. The blue color is the x power five, ah. Huh? The blue color is the x power 5. So how do I draw? I make sure that my x power 5 uh, is nearer to the y axis. Uh, on the, Can I redraw again? This is very ugly. But it must cut through one... Like that, huh? okay. Can I go on to the next one? Can I introduce to the next one? Okay, huh? Now, let's, do, let's take a look at the next one. Okay. What happens is the, now the power is half. So actually the first one is drawn for you. Okay, by the way, uh, uh, can we do some labeling for the graph? Otherwise it's very confusing. Uh, this one, can you help me label y equals to x squared? Then the one you drew can you help me point to y equals to x power 4? Okay, so the original one, y equals to x cubed. The new one you draw points to y equals to x5. So you know which is which. Okay, now, so, done, huh? sorry, uh. can, oh, okay. Now, so y equals to x, x, Power half is uh, actually drawn for you. So this one is actually y equals to x power half. You want to make a guess? What happens if it's one quarter? More narrow? More squarish? So 0 0.5. Like that, right? 0 0.8. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay? Okay? Do you see what happened? It still means where? One one. One one, right? So what happened is I will have a curve that is steeper above the rate the original line, cut one one and go under. So let's repeat it in our notes. You will cut this point, I use a red color pen. You will go above, cut and go under. And can you label properly this is x power 1 over 4? Alright, so if I were to change again y equals to x power 0. Point, what else? Divide by two. Divide by two. Zero, one, two. Oh. Ah, then you become again square. So the pattern is always like quite predictable, right? Uh, the negative power is it? Uh, later we explore. Later we explore. Now, so if we want cube, uh, it's the same. So by using logical sense, it will be here, then it will be here, right? Somewhere like that. So this is my red one, and then uh, my blue one is somewhat here. So this is my original y equals to x power x cube root of x. So far, okay? Can you make a prediction for the one below? So negative half is the one that uh, Ming Yuan asked just now. So let's explore. If it's negative half, negative. Oh, it's like that, right? So what happens if it's negative? Also cut at this special point, right? Also okay at one one right? So I will take out the graph. It seems like it is more narrow, right? Closer to the axis. But it still cuts one one and then it will go here. Okay? So this is the negative one quarter, negative one quarter. This is the negative half. So it's just a get to know session. Now you know that how it looks like. If it ever asks you, then you roughly will know how to draw. Can you make a prediction? Similar, huh? this one similar. So can I use the red color to draw? Remember, you will always meet the one one. Huh? If you think that Desmos is stopping you, what you can do, uh, borrow graph paper from me, go back, draw a very long table, then put in all the value, plot the point, and then see whether you get the same graph. You should. Okay? So Desmos is trying to simplify our lives by drawing the graph for us. So far, okay? Huh? 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 Exam. Exam. Now, let's take a look at exam question. Huh? What if this come on in exam? What if this will come on in exam? Sketch law, right? Now, can you look at all the graph here? And let's uh, summarize by... 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 stating out what are the some common things that they have? Basically, you can summarize this using two parts. This is the first part. This is the second part. Can we look at the first part and see what are the commonalities? Now, first part, square and cube, is it already known? 
Do you already know y equals to x square? Yes, right? Do you already know y, is, uh, y equals to x cube? Yes, right? So this one just talk about even power or odd power. And, and uh, what is the characteristics that you know? It becomes steeper, right? Uh, the turning point becomes more, more what? Rectangular shape, right? And also it meets at all the 1, 1 and negative 1, 1 or negative 1, negative 1, right? So this is the characteristic of the, the first group. Now, what about the second group? Okay, the second group, I would like to invite you to take out your highlighter. I would like you to take out your highlighter and help me highlight one part of the graph. Ready? Can you highlight this? Anything that is x more than 0? Can you highlight anything x more than 0? Help me on this four graph. Let me try. Huh? I realize that the first graph and the second graph, if I talk about x more than 0, is it the same? Is it exactly the same? No, no. They are exactly the same, except for why if, if it's odd number, right, I will have the negative part. I will have the negative part. I will have this part, right? But here don't have, right? But if x more than 0 is not the same, Yes. Let's look at let's look at uh negative power. Can you help me highlight this and highlight this? Are they all the same? Yes, yes right? If I talk about x more than zero, actually they are the same. They are actually the same shape. So how to summarize this? You need to remember when y equals to x power 1 over 2 or 1 over 3 or 1 over 4 whatever number it is it is always like that for x more than 0 do you agree? if y equals to x power negative half negative 1 third negative 1 4 whatever it's always like that so these are the shapes that you need to tell yourself. Find a pattern that resonates with you. Then you find that you can convince yourself to remember. Then use that method to remember. So to close the story, can I go to the question and just talk about one minute how to close this story? This is power half, power one third. So how do I draw? What is the shape? Like that. Agree? And one third half? No, no, no. Because I want what? X more than zero. So, there's only one part. Agree? But X more than zero. The, the tail here, this one is for X less than zero. Do you see this part? So for x more than 0, basically it's the same. But which one is which? Huh? I will leave that to you for homework. Tomorrow when I come back, I want this page done. Uh, there's, a, there's a precise point where they meet. I want you to explore as well. Can you complete this and uh, we go through tomorrow?